a win is a win at the beginning and end of the day that's what matters the most if your team scores more points than the opposing team and you walk out of there with that victory and that's exactly what the baltimore ravens did they did score more points than the dallas cowboys but with the Baltimore Ravens, it's been an issue. And this is not a first-time thing. This is not something that's new. This is not something that's come out of nowhere. But this has been something that's been a problem with the Baltimore Ravens for years. Is that they seem to, in a lot of these games, they'll lack that killer instinct. They'll go up big on these teams. They'll score a bunch of points on these teams. And then they'll coast. They'll chill. And in yesterday's game against the Dallas Cowboys, it was for a number of different reasons why the Dallas Cowboys started coming back. But the Dallas Cowboys started coming back. Yeah, there was the missed field goal from Justin Tucker. That helped out a lot. There was the onside kick where Zay Flowers fumbled. That helped out a lot. There were penalties. That helped out a lot. Then there was a missed third down pass by Lamar. That helped out a lot. So there's a lot of different contributing factors. But the fact remains the same that this blowing leads and giving up big leads and letting teams get back in the game, this is not something that's new to the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, he acknowledged that right after the game. Let's listen to what he said. Harbaugh told me coming out, Lamar, that you gathered the guys, you were the final voice coming out for second right. half, and your one word was finish. Finish. Which has been a challenge. What did you learn here in these last three minutes? Man, the game not over to a 0-0 zero, zero on the clock. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't like how things were going towards the end. You know, I felt like we should have put more points on the board. Mm -hmm. We should have just put the gas on the pedal when we was up 28-6. Uh, right. But uh, we got dub, man. We just going to regroup on uh, Tuesday. And like he mentioned, they got the dove, but they got to regroup on Tuesday. But something else that Lamar Jackson mentioned is something else that for years, years on years, so many Ravens fans have been mentioning as well. That the Baltimore Ravens, they go up, which is great. Hey, we scoring points. Let's get it. Let's go, baby. But they take their foot off the gas way too early. And this has been an ongoing thing for them. Obviously, we know about the, the record, the, the broken record that the Ravens got, where they got like the most ever since, I think, what, 2021? It's been a while, but they got the most uh, blown leads where they, they up by seven or more points in the fourth quarter. The Baltimore Ravens, all Baltimore Ravens. That's, and that's crazy to think about. Like, you think about the Baltimore Ravens, you think about a team that plays good defense. You think about a team that is just amazing at running the football. And, and th that's like a perfect recipe to have a lead when you're good at both of those things. But not this year. Th th this year, this Baltimore Ravens team in the fourth quarter, it's been second half of games overall, but especially in the fourth quarter, it has not been pretty. And the Ravens are very close. And I know we don't like talking about ifs and what could have been and what might have possibly gone down. But the Ravens are very, very close to being 0-3. Very close. And in two out of those three uh, games, they've had double-digit leads in the fourth quarter. Because against the Raiders, they were up by 10 in the fourth quarter. And against the Cowboys. <laughs> The score was 28-6, so they were up by 22 points in the fourth quarter. This has got to tighten up. Right? Ravens, they, they cannot keep doing this. They, they got to figure and, and this is not anything new. I know a lot of times fans, they like to go way back to the Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl, to where the Ravens in that game, they were up big against the 49ers. Now we know. Roger Goodell said, he said, he tried to blame it on Beyonce. Oh, man, her halftime show is so expensive, all them lights. And then, uh, like, the, the Ravens, they were up big. But then the lights cut out, of course, and then we were all just sitting around, chilling. And I know a lot of y'all were at our Super Bowl parties. I was at the sports bar, and we were just sitting there waiting. What's going to happen next? And then the game finally kept back on, and then the, the 49ers, they just start coming back. And I'm thinking, man, the, the Ravens, they, they must be really tired or something because they were just sitting there. Maybe they in a funk or something, but I'm thinking, hold up. The 49ers, they were sitting around just as long as the Baltimore Ravens were. So what's the like so this blowing leads and giving up a lot of points in the second half, this has been going on for a long time. I think it's been highlighted a lot more recently, but this has been an ongoing issue and it almost I'm glad it didn't happen now, like we said, but um it almost cost the Baltimore Ravens a Super Bowl. 
Something's got to give. So, something's got to give. Besides the Ravens giving up all them points in, uh, in the second half of the games. We talked about in the post-game thoughts video how thus far to this point, a couple of different things. One, we could talk about the defense. We could talk about Zach Orr's defense. And his defense in the first half of games, they've been doing their thing. But in the second half, I feel like teams are adjusting to Zach Orr's defense, but he's not adjusting to their offenses. But then on the flip side of that, Baltimore Ravens offense, they got to help him out. They got to help out the Baltimore Ravens defense because we've seen it time and time again. And this has been an ongoing, like with Ravens defense, they'll hold a team, hold a team, hold a team, hold a team. And Ravens offense will just not be helping them out. They won't be helping them out. And then all of a sudden when Ravens offense finally helped them out, then the defense is just so tired, then they end up giving up points too. But so both offense and defense, they go hand in hand. But it's, it's so important that if the Baltimore Ravens are going to have any success, any continued success this season, if they really want to reach their ultimate goal, which I know we don't really want to talk about right now because they're sitting at one and two and things ain't looking so pretty, but you got to start somewhere. And this issue with giving up all these points late in games, it has got to be corrected one way or another. Ravens got to, like, when they put up a lot of points, they got to put up even more. I feel like Baltimore Ravens, what they really need to do is treat every game like you're going against the Miami Dolphins. Like, because again, Ravens, nine times out of ten, we know there was um, that one Thursday night football game against the Dolphins in Miami when it just it wasn't so pretty. Um, and then there was that, uh, that, that, that game a couple years ago in week two or three where they played the Dolphins, and they went up big. They went up big. They scored a bunch of points. They were doing that thing. Everybody was going off. But then the Dolphins just, they crept back, crept back crept back and they beat the Ravens at home Ravens had a huge lead in that game so I guess you got to treat uh, every game like this the good Miami Dolphins games well Lamar Jackson do is his five touchdown Miami Dolphins games it's treated like that but it's it's an ongoing issue Ravens have got to stop taking their foot off the gas because as soon as Ravens take their foot off the gas that's when the oppo opposing team they press down on their acceleration that much harder now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear questions from you all we're gonna start off with our team keep it clean patrons now if you would like to become a patron to where you ain't got to send no email to have your question read in the video all you got to do is send it directly on patreon you go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if y'all want to support the channel in any kind of way everything is down below in the description and also don't forget about the giveaway to the ravens Bengals thursday night football game anyway first question came from my guy Derek. he said engraving i'm not sure how this game will end all right so this this was obviously before the game ended against the Cowboys but he said but listen man you do realize and I hope the rest of the flock gets it the Ravens will never ever win a Super Bowl if you let a team like the Dallas Cowboys come back you're not beating the Bills the Chiefs the Steelers you're not so engraving you're my boy but let's face it Lamar in a Ravens uniform is never winning a Super Bowl in Baltimore under John Harbaugh let's just call it man enough of this coulda shoulda woulda that's reality r-e-a-l-i-t-y I'm so glad you know how to spell me because some people might some people might try to spell out a word and then it might not look so <laughs> I'm just playing though man but hey look man I hope you're wrong I hope you're wrong that that's really all I can say about it. I, I hope you're wrong. But like we said earlier, Ravens gotta they gotta fix this, man. They gotta fix this. Cause every game ain't gonna end up going like that Cowboys game did. Where Ravens they they squander these big leads and but they just end up holding them off. So this is why it's so important. Put the pedal to the metal. Next question came from another team keeping Patreon my guy Plex. He said, We're undefeated. At least when I'm in the building. Okay, I like that. So you need to go to every game then. He said, attending my first Ravens game, it was a great experience. It felt like a home game until the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had that much fun in a long time. And a few things I noticed. Roquan must have put on some muscle in the offseason. He's not moving fluidly. He, he, he put on some to where he's he been, he been struggling a bit. He's just been, yeah, it's, it's been a little bit rough. Uh, he said uh, he's not moving fluidly. Defense played well until a certain point. Right. Offense pulled through when they had to. The most eye-opening thing I saw was when we took the delay of game to punt in the second quarter. Keep in mind, Aubrey hit a 65-yarder in the first, I believe. I knew we were going to go for it or kick the field goal. When we took the delay to punt, I said, man, JT needs a hug right now. 
we're witnessing in real time the drop off of an all time great. And then when he missed in the fourth, almost shed a tear. He's come through us for he's come through for us so many times. A lot of the time, he was our offense. I hope his family and teammates keep his spirit high. I'm no NFL player, but I know how it feels to no longer be able to physically do the things he used to. All in all, the game was closer than it should have been. I still want Doc Harbaugh gone. So a little Doc Rivers jab at Harbaugh. But yeah, with Justin Tucker, man, it's um scary to watch because you you think about it and you think all right what's the fix for jt how, how, how are they gonna get jt right harbaugh did say in his presser on monday he said oh it's a um it's a technique issue that justin tucker's working with that, that he got to work through and see my daughter she's even crying thinking about justin tucker and she's only been in this world for three months and she knows that justin tucker has been struggling and this is not what we used to as ravens fans so it's tough for all of us even the new raven fan with her but um it's been crazy, man. So it's like you you think about it. And you're like, all right, he, he going to get through this, right? He got to get through this, right? But then you think, what if he doesn't get through this? And hopefully that will be wrong. Next question came from my guy Kyle. He said, hey, Graven, how you and the fam doing? Hey, we doing great. He said, this is my first ever question. So I wanted to make it a good one. Oh, yeah. Hey, y'all, y'all sit down. Relax. We're going to be in for a treat. He said, uh, the Ravens-Cowboys game finished about an hour ago, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on the game and also your thoughts on it, too. Sorry if this is long, but I wanted to get some stuff off my chest. Oh, yeah, he had a lot to get off his chest. So let's listen up. He said, uh, first, let's start with coaching. I felt like we were a better coach team than the Chiefs and Raiders games in the first three quarters. Oh, yeah, the first three quarters, yeah. That's what? Was continuing he said even though there were a few bad play calls here and there overall the play calling was good for majority of the game i agree especially on offense because they kept stuff they kept stuff fresh they kept stuff new they were not predictable ravens were switching it up so yeah i agree he said the ravens offense was actually scoring points and it felt like we were consistently moving the ball down the field on defense we held them to six points and had multiple sacks yeah yeah, that defense was doing that thing too. Even with and it was crazy, all the bad calls that were going on. A lot of them came in the fourth quarter as well too. But with all the bad calls, Ravens offense and defense overall, they were they were doing a good job. He said, and then of course during the fourth quarter, we turned into the typical Baltimore Ravens coaching. We started getting too conservative on our play calling, and that almost cost us the game. Uh, every time the Ravens are up in the fourth quarter, we decide to just cruise along, and it seems like we have no drive or motivation to play the game. This of course falls on John Harbaugh. Even with this win, I hope it doesn't cover up. All of John's mistakes during this game. That leads me to this question. What are your thoughts on Zach or this game? I again felt like he did well, but there were some lingering issues from the past two weeks, like poor matchups. All of this being said, I still think coaching needs a huge overhaul and that we will never make it past the AFC Championship game with this coaching staff. Wow. See, my, 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 my guy earlier, he just talked about, Derek, he just talked about how um, he said this team would never make a Super Bowl under this coaching staff. Uh, and now uh, Kyle is saying that we will never even make it past the AFC championship game with this coaching staff. Mm. And he said, uh, moving on to the offense. Oh, you did ask, what are my thoughts on Zach Orr's game? Um, I, I just feel like he, he's still new. Remember, this is the first time being a defensive coordinator. So it's, this is all new for him. Uh, so that we knew there were going to be some struggles. Just like with the offensive line, they're playing, there's a couple of them playing new positions. So we knew it was going to be a struggle. But anyway, with Zach Orr specifically, um, it's about adjustments now, man. Adjustments. Like, through the first two quarters, you do your thing. Third quarter, you, you, you do your your thing overall. But really, second half. Second half and fourth quarter, that's where things get really shaky. So, that adjustment has got to be made. Because, again, teams are adjusting better to him than, they, than he's adjusting to them. So, that's got to improve if, if that defense is going to have success. Uh, and and uh, I think, too, one thing we got to think about, too, with the defense. Um, this is... Not Mike McDonald's defense. This is Zach Orr's defense. So it may be some little different things here and there. Um, but, again, it's early. So, and I know it ain't super, super early. But it's still it's, it's early enough in the season. I said we got to give it six or seven games to really see how Zach Orr does. And then we'll go from there. Anyway, he said, moving on to the offense. Lamar played very well this game. And I felt like he was making better decisions and passes than previous years. Now, he is the only reason the Ravens even won this game. And it makes it even more sad that he will never win a Super Bowl here in Baltimore under John Harbaugh. Uh, the offensive line, in my opinion, played way better than the past two weeks. And I think a lot of that goes to Daniel Filele. He performed way better than I expected. And even though he had a few hiccups, he played solid overall. The running game was phenomenal. And was we finally got to see the Derrick Henry that we have all been waiting for. Yes, he got 25 carries. So he, they kept feeding him. And he was making the, the Cowboys pay for it. 
And he said, this is what y'all get for not paying me. This is what y'all get for not signing me. I came to the Ravens. Anyway, uh, he said, not only that, but Justice Hill also had a solid game, and it felt like our rushing game was unstoppable. One thing that really stuck out to me this game uh, was our lack of tight end use. Mark Andrews had zero catches, and Isaiah, Isaiah likely had one. I'm wondering if this is due to coaching or it's just the defense making sure that the tight ends don't any, get any catches. It was the style of game that they played. I know a lot of people that they had an issue with that. I didn't. Well, especially when the score is 28-6 because the Baltimore Ravens, they were coming out as a power rushing team. So Mark Andrews wasn't really out there too much. It was Charlie Kohler out there, Isaiah Likely out there. The tight ends were really blocking this game. They were being used as block because the running game was working so well. If it's working so well, why stop it? Why stop it? Uh, yeah, you got you want to get different people involved and whatnot. You want your tight ends to get involved. But hey, it's, it's going to be some games where they don't go off. Going to be some games where they're not really involved, but if, if the what the Ravens is doing is working, I got no problem with it. Anyway, continuing, he said, um, moving on to defense. They, again, played very well for the first three quarters, but fell apart at the end. I can attribute that to being tired, but you have to play a full four quarters or you will lose like we almost did today. We finally saw Kyle Hamilton return to last year's form and the other Kyle getting two sacks. Nate Wiggins did not play his best game, but it is his first NFL start. And only his second game, so I can't really blame him. Uh, he was also matched up against one of the best receivers in the league with CeeDee Lamb. He sure was. Uh, one thing I did notice, though, is Roquan Smith's play. Here we go. He said, I felt like he has been a letdown these first couple of games, and that could possibly be due to the loss of Patrick Queen or just adjusting to the new coaching style. What do you think? I, I think it's uh, possibly adjusting to Zach Orr's defense, but also, again, it just, it just seems like it just seems a little, a little sluggish to me. So, again, that's just me. I, I don't know what's going on behind it. That's just what, I, what I, it's, it seems like to me. I could be wrong, though. He said, um, last but not least, special teams. As much as I am a Justin Tucker fan, I think it's time for us to all realize that he is washed and he will never be the same Justin Tucker as before. This scares me because if the Ravens make the playoffs, we might have to rely on Justin Tucker, which we have seen this season, to not end well. I think it's time to move on from him after this season and start anew with someone else. Whew. That's, that's tough right there. Hopefully you end up being wrong about that. Hopefully Justin Tucker the rest of the season, he has a bounce back rest of the season. And he can get back to being automatic tuck and Legatron and all that stuff and being the clutch kicker that we have all come to know him to be. But yeah, at this point, it's like we, we don't know what we have in Justin Tucker. Um, he said, besides that, we had uh, that onside kick that the Ravens would have easily gotten if the ball wasn't slipping through Zay Flowers' hands. Those two special teams plays almost cost us the game and shifted momentum into the Cowboys' favor, which leads me to this. If John Harbaugh's only strength is supposed to be special teams, but we can't even make a field goal or recover an onside kick, what is he good for? Oh my goodness! Wow, what a what a what a what a a road, what a what a road to 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 get to that question. He said, uh, overall, I felt like we played our best game this season, but it's still not even close to what we can achieve. As much as I hate to say it, the Ravens won't make it anywhere close to the Super Bowl this year if. This is the way our team plays. Sorry for the long question, but as long as I have been a Ravens fan, I have never seen such incompetence in coaching. Fire John Harbaugh now. I'm out. <laughs> Whew, next question came from my guy Nick Brick, who also team keeping clean patron. He said, what's up, Engraven? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing good. Hope you too. He said, quick question. Every day I think about Mike Tomlin saying the Ravens can't play four quarters. Oof. He said it. He did say that. And the Ravens, as we know, well, you know. He said, this season I went in saying I don't care if we get the number one seed or any of that. I just want to see them play full games and make decisions in high-pressure situations. The blowouts don't move me anymore. Sadly, I still haven't seen progress in this. The team wants to get up early and relax and party on the sideline. And if they don't do that, it's pretty much over. My question is, what has happened for them to make that change? Or what has to happen for them to make that change? Is it purely mindset? I, I think so. I think so. They need to approach it, like, even if they get a big lead. Like, like Lamar said, like we to show the, the, the clip at the beginning of this video. Lamar said, hey, it's, it's four quarters. Game ain't over to that clock says zero. So they need to approach it like that to where they are really trying to put up more points. We get it, things happen. You ain't going to score on every single drive. But they got to they gotta just keep at it, man. They got to keep at it. They cannot get complacent you cannot get comfortable like you really gotta keep racking up them points man uh he said uh this has been going on since flacco days especially after ed and reed left 
is it organizational? You see, that's that's what we were just saying. Um, Cause we talked about the Super Bowl first. We talked about that Super Bowl. How it, even that like that that was almost it was close. It was close to not being Ravens second. Oh, it was very close. We're glad that it it went down the way it did, and Ravens closed it out. But still, like so, this it, it has been a thing for uh, a minute, and I, I do really think it's mindset. It's, it's got to be mindset. Ravens just really need to develop that killer instinct and do it consistently. Because there are games where they do do it, but they just got to do it a lot more consistently. Next question came from my guy Raven Pride, who's been a team keeper clean patron for a minute too. Appreciate you. He said, What's up, Engraven? It's Raven Pride. First thing I would like to say is may God continue to bless you and your beautiful family. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. He said, When I arrived at ATT Stadium to see our boys getting ready to tango with the Cowboys, man, when I tell you, Raven Nation was in full effect. I love that. I, I, I love that. Because I know that there's some fan bases. There's a, lot of, there's a couple of fan bases that like really go crazy with it. Obviously, Steelers do. And I know a lot of Ravens fans don't want to hear that. But Steelers fans, they travel. They really travel like crazy. Another team, Bills. I know Ravens fans don't want to hear that. But Bills fans, they travel like crazy too. Love hearing that Baltimore Ravens fans are traveling like crazy. I know they definitely do down here in Florida. Like, any Florida Ravens game, like, all right, Ravens fans, because they, they look for excuses to come down here to Florida, which I love. I love it. Um, so this is nice to hear about that. Anyway, he said, um, I'm here to tell you that from all the plays that were called, yes, Hobbs continues to get away with what has given us the lead. That field goal attempted by Tucker is the most difficult thing to watch because I was hoping he would put on the show because I was so rooting for him. I think that it's time to look for another kicker to put some pressure on Tucker. So thanks for taking the time to hear me out. Much love to you, your family, and team. Keep it clean. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Um, well, Jesse, you saying to get another kicker to put pressure on Tucker. So it sounds like you're talking about right here, right now. Um, that'd be hard for the Ravens to do because Justin Tucker makes a significant amount of money. Um, and didn't they just extend his contract towards it last year or the year before last? I forgot when. I got to look it up. But um, that's... So it's tricky. It's very, very tricky. Um, again, I'm hoping that for the rest of this year he can bounce back. But Ravens, I'm, I'm sure they they don't want to. And they're not going to put it out there in the public. But they got to be thinking of backup plans just in case. Next question came from my guy Keontae, who I believe was also out there that game. He said, that game was so good. Defense gave us all a big scare. The flock showed up. Big time, so much that I could see Ardarius Washington feeding off the noise. Oh yeah, my guy Keontae was in the building. I love that Ardarius Washington was balling. He was balling. He did give up one play, but he was balling. So shout out to him. He said, "My question though is, could Wiggins be starting by midseason? He already started. He was starting yesterday. He started yesterday. He was out. The, the defense went out there yesterday, first drive because they kicked Dallas Cowboys the ball, and number two was out there. He's a starter. So boom, there you go. He's a starter. They had Marlon Humphrey in the slot." Brandon Wiggins on the uh, pff, Brandon Wiggins, I'm tripping. Brandon Stevens on the outside. So yeah, your question's already answered. You saw it. You saw it yesterday. Uh, he said. Um, but anyway, he said, could Wiggins be a starter by midseason? He was out there a lot and did well. He said. Also, do you think the defensive collapse was play call or lack of execution? I think it's a bit of both. I think it's a bit of both. Um, but because again, it's something that we've been seeing constantly in these games. Now again, some of it has to do with some of the calls, the ref calls. Because that's something that a lot of times defense can't do nothing about. Especially if it's them terrible calls that the Ravens been getting like crazy. It's, it's so crazy to watch in real time. These calls have been going against the Ravens. but So I think it's a mix of both for sure. Next question came from my guy, Danny B. He said, hey, Raven, hope you and the fam have been doing well. We're doing pretty good. I appreciate you, Danny. He said, I'm a long-time subscriber and Patreon member, but I haven't sent a message in about three years. <laughs> he been chilling in the background, just relaxing. You you've been more comfortable than John Harbaugh and the Ravens in the fourth quarter. But no, I, I appreciate you though, man. He said, um, "It's time to have a tough conversation about this Ravens defense and special teams. It feels like we can't rely on what made us comfortable last season anymore. It makes no sense that we're first in run defense, but dead last in pass defense. That's usually how um, my teams are in Madden. Like we'll be first in run defense, we'll be shutting it all down. But pass defense, ooh." I'll be struggling. We'll be getting a lot of interceptions. But anyway, but anyway he said, um, most of us thought our secondary was one of the best in the league when healthy, but they just collapsed in the fourth quarter. 
yeah, going into this season, we were like, oh, yeah, Ravens secondary, especially based off of what they did last year. And we added an A Wiggins. We got Eddie Jackson to, oh, yeah, let's go. It ain't been so pretty. The, yeah, them, them late games, them, the, 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 the fourth quarters in them games, it's been rough, very rough. Anyway, he said no pass rush, blown coverages, poor tackling, and no game-changing plays on defense. It's crazy because our pass rush will be doing that thing early, on, early on in the game. Early on in the game, our pass rush will be killing it. Then uh, maybe they get tired. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's the adjustments like we talked about. He said offensively, the Ravens were lights out. Other than that fourth quarter, that one fourth quarter point, it felt like we were going to score every drive in the second half. But the Cowboys did a great job keeping Lamar off the field late in the game, which seemed like their best path to a win. Oh, yeah. They were smart about that. That's a really good point that you made, too. Uh, the game would have been iced if Tucker made that kick or we recovered that onside kick. See, it's, it's, it's the little things. And like the previous question talked about, Special teams Well it was a couple questions ago But special teams That's John Harbaugh's special T But special teams They, they let us down yesterday. Well a lot of different uh, Parts of the, uh, of the game A lot of the different phases of the game Let us down yesterday But anyway continuing He said I've seen people blaming Conservative play calling But I don't get it They couldn't stop the run So why stop running We blitzed like crazy in the fourth quarter But couldn't generate any Pass rush Our defenders were losing Their one on ones And we gave up A 40 yard catch To a fullback Because of missed tackles By Kyle Hamilton And Marlon Humphrey Yeah that I remember that play That was like Crazy to see Because it was like Is this really happening Is this really going down And we were thinking like Oh no Please tell me The Ravens ain't about to do it. Please tell me They ain't about to do it. And they almost did it it just seemed like everything was going the Dallas Cowboys way at that point. Like, you give up that big catch to a fullback? Really? Like, Pat Ricard don't even be getting him like that. See, we gave up a big catch to a fullback. <laughs> but anyway, he said, I'm a firm believer that if we score over 21 points, we should win every game. We can talk about hardball in the offensive line, but realistically, our defense is allowing 26 points per game after only giving up 16 last season. We have to figure out a way to play complimentary Ravens football. I agree. I agree. The offense got to help out the defense. The defense got to help out the offense. The special teams got to help out both. This question came from my guy, Morton. He said, John Harbaugh got to go. Every NFL team knows exactly what to do in the fourth quarter because John Harbaugh will never play to win from now on. I hope we are losing the game going into the fourth quarter as long as John Harbaugh is our head coach. There's a reason teams catch up to us because he just does the exact same thing every time. Run, 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 three and out, punt, and on a rare occasion, run, run, pass. He isn't fooling anyone. Everyone knows John Harbaugh is run on the first two downs every single time. Why did we stop blitzing this? Because Harbaugh got scared. Our pass rush was doing this thing all day long until John Harbaugh got scared and went away from what worked. We need a coach that is always going to play to win And not one that plays not to lose That part right there It's a mindset thing He also said I got a question for Team Keep It Clean And I hope someone can answer Has anyone noticed if Justin Tucker stopped doing his little uh, Catholic pray thing before every kick I mean no offense to anyone uh, that is Catholic uh, I'm not sure what it's called because I'm Baptist I believe in God with all my heart But I've been seeing I've been trying to see if Justin Tucker stopped doing his little prayer thing And maybe that's why he has been missing I keep forgetting to pay attention when he kicks Maybe it's age I know kickers can do their jobs longer than most positions But maybe age has affected him I don't know man But something is definitely wrong with him Maybe it's because he stopped praying Maybe it's age Maybe he works out differently than he used to Maybe it's his diet But something is definitely wrong with him I'm not sure what it is going, What's going on with Justin Tucker um, but one thing we do know is that he keeps missing <laughs> he, he keeps missing these field goals And that's not good at all So whatever's going on with JT Hopefully it can get fixed ASAP Because yeah it could come down to Some games could come down to a Justin Tucker kick And some games will They will come down to a Justin Tucker kick And we gotta hope that the ball bounces in our favor Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, tell EDC and the Ravens to get Devontae Adams. He said, get Devontae Adams. Bless the family in the channel. Tell EDC and the Ravens to get Devontae Adams. Let's get this ring. So I guess my guy TJ ain't like how uh, Ravens receivers just were not really involved pass catching wise in the game against the Cowboys. Now, when their numbers were called, they did make plays. Nelson Aguilar with that like 50 yard catch and run. Um, Zay Flowers with that clutch catch. And he had two other catches as well. Uh, Rashad Bateman with his touchdown catch And he had two other catches as well But yesterday was all about the running game It was all about the running game I do get still wanting Devontae And I ain't mad at that at all But yesterday was all about the running game Well, until it wasn't Next question came from Charlotte. She said, Angry Raven and Team Keep It Clean fam. I hear a lot of your questions from subs want Belichick to replace John Harbaugh. 
But please check this out. Uh, then this was a report call from New England Patriots in 2024. He said, while he did get a B minus, uh, you need to read the comments. Most team keep it clean may not know or remember that Belichick was a coach with the Be More Colts. And you know how long ago that was? He started in 1975. His style is old school. It might not go over with these young players. I do think Hobbs needs to be held more accountable. And if we don't go all the way, ask to leave. I hope Ravens turn the corner and I'm not screaming for nothing. LOL. May you, your fam, and team keep it clean. Stay strong. Times are interesting. Peace and blessings. A Raven for life. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a good point. Like you did mention, he is an old school type of coach and that may not fly and if he does things the old school type of way will he be able to get this new school ravens team over the hump i don't think we'll ever know i don't think they will go to belichick but we'll see when we maybe get there this off season but only in my opinion only if john harbaugh decides that he wants to retire because him and the ravens they locked in now, this question came before the Cowboys game. It's from my guy, Melo. He said, good evening, team. Keep it clean. I hope everyone is doing well. Now, Ravens win with a purpose and a point proven against the Cowboys. Well, they started to, but then, well, y'all know how the rest of the game went. He said, I didn't send a question in after the Raiders game because the last question I sent you said was one of the best questions you will ever ask, so that put some pressure on us. <laughs> He said, so that put some pressure on me uh, to deliver again. So I have been watching film to find something, and I believe I did. And no, it's not about the offensive line. That horse was beat to the ninth degree this week. <laughs> and, and look what look what the result was. Look how they did. So whatever it is, hey, maybe we just got to keep talking about it. Everybody keep mentioning it because Ravens see all this stuff. Now, that's why I say well, whatever you mention, whatever you talk about, do it with respect. Because, again, these, these players, they are people. They're real people. Do it with respect. But because they, they be seeing this stuff And I guess that gives them a little extra motivation That offensive line was doing anything in the game But anyway, he said Have you ever analyzed or even noticed Lamar's QB cadence? No, I, I, I haven't He said his cadence is Ready, then two seconds, break To analyze the defense Said hut And that's it now, I went back to 2018 and compared to last week same thing. Great defenders time his snap, which doesn't help any years or well, doesn't help any years offensive line. I believe this is a part of his game that should consider changing because it gives the offense another weapon to get the defense off their game and nobody has to move an inch. Literally. Don't move. If he combine that and drives where he runs no huddle when the defense is sucking wind like the last drive of the Chiefs game, we can get free yards or even first downs. Teams used to blow a gasket when Rodgers would do his green 19. Oh yeah. Yeah, that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is great at getting people to jump off sides. You're right. Uh, or Manning would yell, Omaha. Oh, yeah. Peyton Manning was another one good at it. Football is a physical game just, at it, just as much as it is mental. What are your thoughts? This is, yeah, this is a great follow-up. And I did not think about that at all. Um, that cadence. Yeah, if, if teams are timing the cadence um, and you're – like, it's an easy way to set them up because, like you mentioned, football is it's even more mental than it is physical – I think um, so if teams because teams study all of that, they watch film on all of that stuff. They analyze all of that stuff. So if you can get a leg up on a team by what you've shown on film, all right, this is my cadence. This is what I normally do. And then you switch it up sometimes in another game. Uh, you don't want to switch it up too much because, again, you, you, you want to make sure your guys are on point because you got your cadence that you normally do. Your offensive line is used to that cadence. So if you switch it up a little too much, you might not only confuse the other team, you might confuse your own guys. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's a really, really good point Because free yards are free yards Free plays are free plays And yeah, Aaron Rodgers, he is probably the best ever at that So if Lamar could add that to his arsenal Oof, it'd be sweet 